Yes, hello, kumusta? Oh. Ah, uh, ito. Okay naman. Nagsusulat ng 100 words. Yung 100 words insights for evaluation sa CSC training. Ginagawa ko na kasi para pagdating ng Monday, okay na okay na. Hmm. Ah, yung output natin. Tapos na ho. Gusto niyo ho bang panoorin? Ah, hindi na muna. Parang surprise. Gusto niyo bang panoorin? Hali! Samahan niyo kami. Panoorin natin ang output ng Team Sana All. At sabay-sabay nating alamin kung ano kayo mga natutunan namin sa 9 days na training na yun. At paano namin dadalhin yung mga natutunan yon sa kanya-kanyang opisina namin. Come on! assumes authority and makes a choice. While an effective person always looking for excuses, rarely exhibit initiative and depends on other people to make the choice for them. Effective person always end up as winner. And mastering your inner world, personal effectiveness, how to manage your self-esteem and to the team. The public self, it is the impression of the people have about you or based on your appearance, behavior, and non-verbal communication. <clears throat> One must strive for a better performance and a more satisfying career. When things don't work out the way we expect them, we have to focus to balance personal life. Being an achiever is also characterized by having the courage, commitment, confidence, connectedness, and control. As for me, to be an achiever, we have to be driven by a strong motive to attain our goals. We have this desire to accomplish something meaningful, something that is fulfilling. Achievers translate positive intentions into tangible results. They are action-oriented, always thinking, testing, and applying new ideas. Achievers figures out what works and replicates them. What does not work, they change their approach until it delivers a positive outcome. An achiever is also a visionary who have discipline. He understands and view discipline as a commitment, dedication, and excellence towards achieving a goal rather than a burden to be endured. Hi, Tassar, and I will be talking a little bit about coping with stress. 
So in his supervisory development course, the lecturer was able to properly define what is stress, and then there are different types of stress, and also the stressors. Another thing that I like about this lecture is that um, the it's very tailored to workplace, so the lecturer was able to identify the different kinds of stressors in the workplace because one of the ways that in wherein we can cope with stress is to recognize them. So if we don't know what does what stresses us as a supervisor or to be supervisors, we don't know or we may fail to um, to to be an effective. Just like a saying in the lecture goes, stress is a fact of life, but need not be a way of life. We should agree, because stress is everywhere around us, okay? So in handling subordinates, sometimes I fail to, um, I, I fail to recognize that I'm stressed, that it affects the way I handle them, which sometimes creates friction, okay? So that the supervisor adapts to the people in situation, yeah, which I agree again, because as a supervisor, you should have a holistic evaluation on how to handle the situation you yourself the the event the the people around you a supervisor is accountable diverse um she should know to how to analyze proactive is a team builder and synergistic okay so i know that i will be an effective supervisor if the desired um desired result of the team achieved Okay. So as an obstetrician, as a physician, I am dealing with stress almost every day in my workplace. So I know that I will be an effective supervisor if ever, or a team leader, if ever during surgeries or deliveries, my uh, um, the procedure went smooth sailing. There's no problem with the instruments. There's no tension with the, with the uh, co-workers. And there's no added um, problem to the what is uh, to the stress that's ongoing already. For me, the junction transition is a more challenges. I relate to my work from the local government unit to region as new horizon, but it's opportunity to change my new mindset. I've learned on this session the transition is a way to learn more process to becoming more effective and efficiently public servant. We understand on our journey even a thousand of miles always begin in a single step. Clearly, our position as a supervisor is not only a title, but a responsibility to set and give direction to our office. What I learned from the topic are the differences between the personal power and the position power. I learned that delegation is the difference between managing and doing. It is not about allocating mundane tasks to keep employees busy. Delegation is letting go and letting your people excel. Day 7. A supervisor transforms. A team leader, a risk taker, an arbitrator or an assistant problem solver, a net worker, a strategist or an analyzer, a facilitator or an originator of change, an organizer, a resource manager, a mentor, or a trainer, and a spokesperson. I commit to transform not only myself, but be a channel where others transform also together with me. Supervisor is a continuous learning process. Therefore, I will continue to adapt to the needs of my unit and of the agency as a whole and to continue to learn, meaning listen to what everyone has to say and address their concerns as far as practicable, emulate the characteristics of leaders of transformation, articulate everyone's issues and concerns, reinforce the standards set for performance, and navigate the course to where my division is set to go together with the members of my team. We have the power to empower, and power is the foundation of an effective leadership. Those were the most striking learnings that I've got from the module of power of function of leadership. As a leader, we need to be inspiring, motivating, and empowering. And our attitude is everything. And the one who is greatest is the one who is willing to serve and versatile. As a team player of Camp Surgeon in Team Emeracido Hospital, I am so excited to put into reality all the learnings from this SDC track. 
this will gonna be a great help to us. Learn about the topic leadership and power is that um, leadership can be expressed in many contexts. It involves various combinations of power such as directing others, ability or um, power to control, influence, guide, and encourage others. And also, power is the capacity to produce effects on others. And maybe I can apply this to my workplace by supporting others, I guess, because I do believe that a true leader is a great facilitator. That's all. Thank you. On the ninth day of our training, we learned that leaders are not managers, and we also learned the elements of situational leadership. For me, the key takeaways during this day of our training are the following. Number one, as supervisors, we should be a healthy mix of a leader that inspires vision, creativity, and innovation in the organization, and on the one hand, a manager that's able to allow our organization to reach our targets and manage resources effectively. This healthy mix of these two personas would allow us to become effective in inspiring and mobilizing our resources to move our organization further. On the discussion on the elements of situational leadership, I learned that there's no one-size-fits-all approach in leadership. We should be discerning, creative, and analytical as supervisors in knowing what particular approach we would give or implement to solve a particular problem. I believe that these takeaways are things that I can implement and bring with me to my own organization and my vision of moving our department forward would be possible thanks to this training from the Civil Service Commission Region 11. Thanks also to our teachers who were very generous in sharing their ideas knowledge, and skills to us as their students. For sure, as participants, our service to the government is our service and contribution to nation building. See you all in Estes. See you all.